So what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Reverend. My name is Jack and I hope you're having a good day. You're probably wondering where I've been, especially since I just got this car running and on the road. Um, why haven't I been posting? Well, the reason I can sum up in the palm of my hand, this thing right here, check that out. Now, for those of you who don't know engines very well, this is a rod bearing. So this goes in between your rods and when you start knocking, this is what is causing that noise. And which brings me to the fact that I was knocking. My brand new motor had rod knock. So this was not an issue of me building it. Uh, it was perfectly fine, ran for like a week. Um, however, I was going on a road trip and on that four hour road trip, I was unaware that my turbo was smoking and I was leaking a little bit of oil, but mainly the turbo smoking. So my turbo seals were bad and I burned all of my oil, bone dry, like nothing on the dipstick at all. I'm in the car with my friend and I noticed this horrible noise. Sounds weird. So I pull over and check the dipstick, nothing at all. And I knew right then and there that my motor was toast, or at least my bearings. I didn't know what to do. I wasn't sure if I wanted to rebuild it or just sell it, or I don't know, but I, I knew I couldn't sell it because this is my first car. It's my favorite car I've ever driven. It's just so fun to work on. And even though it gives me a lot to work on, I, I do love it. I knew I had to rebuild it. Um, however, the issue is more than just this. When you run out of oil, really all your bearings should be replaced. And especially if they all look like these, which they don't, but most of them are pretty toast. Along with it, my crankshaft, I don't have it right now, but I'll put up some video of how scored that is. So I'm going to one, have to machine my crank and two, have to get oversized bearings to work with a, the small, smaller diameter crank. So if you can see, the engine is crooked. Uh, that's because it's not in the engine mounts. And the reason for that is because I've been doing surgery on it. If my camera will focus, hello? Camera, please, come on. There we go. <laughs> so, oh, I got, <laughs> are you kidding me? So, I've been doing surgery on it uh, from the bottom. I don't wanna pull this motor, I, I just don't. There's so much that, or there's not much that goes into it, but it's it's annoying having to redo all the fluids. Uh, I'm gonna have to do oil anyway, but it's just annoying to pull a motor. And on these Miatas, if you don't have the right lift, um, it's really annoying to, or if you don't have a lift, it's really annoying to drop the subframe and go from the bottom because the oil pan is right above the subframe and you need to take it off in order to do anything like inside the engine. So. I, at my tech school, um, I had a brace that sat on top and held the engine up and that allowed me to drop the subframe and go from the underneath. Uh, so that's what I did. Uh, I got some footage of it. You can see I took off the oil pan and inspected the bearings from the bottom. They didn't feel like they were knocking. You can like kind of move them back and forth and they didn't feel like they're knocking. But as soon as I took off those uh, rod caps, I could tell those were toast, the bearings were toast. But the journals were pretty good, like good enough to just replace without having to do anything to the crankshaft. I thought I could just spin a bearing up into there, put one up there, and then send her home. But after taking the um, main, main caps off for the main bearings, like the ones that hold the crankshaft in, I realized that those were also very bad. <laughs> Sorry, um, the, I had to take that out. I had to take the oil pump out. I had to take the clutch and transmission out. That's sitting right over there. I basically had to take the entire drivetrain out and the bottom of the engine. So right now it's just from the oil pan up is still in there. I didn't want to have to take out the head because I didn't want to redo the head gasket. And uh, I kept the pistons in there. They're just kind of held up there with friction and I put a layer of tape underneath so it would support them and cradle them. So that's, they're in there. Um, all I need to do is resurface that crank and put it in. It shouldn't be too much work, but it's enough to be tedious and annoying and enough to cost me a lot of money. If you guys wanna see me continue this build, please subscribe. That will help me more than anything. Like subscribe and watch my videos. Uh, 
that will help me more than anything because I've reached a thousand subscribers now. Thank you all so much for that. Like, I can't thank you guys enough. I appreciate that so much, but I need about a thousand more watch hours. So if you guys wanna just spam watch my content, that'd be amazing. <laughs> so that will get me to uh, monetization, which I can then invest all my money back into this thing and make cooler videos for you guys. So yeah, that's where I've been. The Miata's down, but not down for the count. Uh, I've got, I'm actually sitting right now on a four post lift that my shop mate uh, Nevin just got working and I'll be able to fix it on there. If you see, I'll turn you guys around. You can see it has those two center points that I can lift the car from. So that's really nice. So right now it's just kind of a matter of money fixing this thing. I mean, everything's a matter of money. Also side note, I wanna show you something pretty cool. Right behind me is Jesse's Miata. And Eli painted this thing to be all cell shaded, like uh, Initial D. And it looks pretty badass, I like it. So it's got all the corners blacked out, it's just Sharpie. I believe it says Mazda, Rev Rain, Miata back there. I'm not gonna say what this one is, but you can probably translate it if, you're, if you want to. <laughs> but I think that's pretty cool. There's the motorcycle I've been working on. Just a little life update, shop is messy, but I don't really care. Oh, check this out. This is an air intake that Jesse and Evan fabbed up. Yeah, this thing runs, but barely. It's on a standalone ECU. Same one as mine, actually the Speedy EFI. And we're just trying to get it tuned. And a little close up on my engine. Down there you can see the open oil pan with the belt, timing belt off. And that's just straight into the oil pan. Once I get it up on the lift over here, I can then work on it from underneath. One more thing is somebody, I don't know who, but it's, uh, it doesn't matter anymore while running the bridge. Somebody stepped on my fender right here and completely just dented that in. So you can see I had to bend it back, but it kind of screwed it up and it doesn't fit right and it messed up the paint. So I'm gonna have to get that corrected and then I'm probably gonna wrap the entire thing. And the color I'm thinking is a Mazda color, a new Mazda color actually. It's gonna be the same, but different. I'll leave that for you guys to guess in the comments. I've been thinking about doing live streams while fixing this thing. And I hope to see you guys then. Uh, I'll try to think of a way to do it. I might have to just do it through my phone. I'm 40 watch hours away from getting super chats or the ability for you guys to do super chats as well as memberships. Those would help me a lot, but you're not obligated to do that. If you want to do it, support me. I would be extremely grateful. I'm extremely thankful for you guys um, for getting me to a thousand subscribers. I, I appreciate that a lot. Thank you guys like from the bottom of my heart. And I hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, it's just a little update. Uh, I hope to be doing more current content instead of looking back on what happened. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.